Oh, oh, Paul, the teeth are falling out. Oh, what's going on? I can't believe my eyes. Well. Sorry. Um, I was doing a thing. Yeah, no, no, I thought I was letting that pling, pling flay out. <laughs> <laughs> I've become Professor Stanley Unwin. There it, uh, Sanya, I'm doing it because Tanya hates it. Doing what? Oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of it myself, to be honest. Oh, God, what are you doing? <laughs> Do you want to move awkwardly past this and straight into the content of the episode? Oh. Yeah? You may be wondering why he pulled out those fake chattering teeth. I am. But without the person who invented these fake chattering teeth, we wouldn't have the modern toy industry as we know it, potentially. Yes. Potentially. Potentially. Today, we are talking about a chap. His name is Marvin Glass, and there's a great big book about him that you got, which you thought would be a small little light wreath. Too big. And it's the biggest thing I've held in a very long while. I wanted to talk about this chap because... It was your anyone, idea. anyone who listens to Cheap Show knows I've got a bit of a board game obsession, yeah. right? And it's not just the board games like we all recognise, like Cluedo and Monopoly and Scrabble. There, there are board games that are based on toy mechanics. Yeah. Like the most obvious example is Mousetrap. Yeah. Mousetrap is fundamentally a toy built around a very sloppy board game structure. I've got a fact about Mousetrap. Do you want to give it now or save it? Uh, uh, do you want to do it now? You're going to mention Mousetrap again? No. The British version was the only version of Mousetrap with a toilet in it. The others didn't have a toilet? No. Wait, what of version? Poo. People don't like poo. Wait, no. Not in the original Mousetrap, there's no toilet. In the remake, they put a toilet in. When they remade it in the 90s, Look, they put a toilet in. It's what it says in. here, somewhere. No, I'm not saying you're wrong, but all I'm saying is I don't remember there being a toilet specifically in the original Mousetrap game. You crank the handle, it kicks the boot, which knocks the signpost, which knocks the bucket, which makes the ball go down the little slippy thing, which then goes down a chute, yes. which hits the, uh, the pipe, the, the plumbing, yes. which knocks a bigger ball forward, which drops down onto a platform seesaw, which makes the diver jump into the barrel, and that vibration sets off the cage, which drops onto the mouse. <laughs> Funniest game you've ever seen. Sid Saxon, have you heard of him? No. He was a famous board game troubleshooter from the 70s. And he was brought in. It was his idea. His big idea was uh, the wedges of cheese. For Trivial Pursuit? No. Oh, uh, for Mousetrap? This... How many board games have slices of cheese in? I don't know. Build a Better Burger. That's the three I can yeah, think of. Yeah, collectible plastic cheese in Mousetrap. It actually is cheese in Mousetrap. Yeah, because don't... You don't... No, you use a mouse in Mousetrap. There's no cheese you in it. cheese. You don't do, yeah? You look up. So do. anyway, long story short, I bought. I was given a book uh, about the history of board games, and one of the chapters was about a guy called Marvin Glass. And Marvin Glass is someone I'd never heard of before. But without him, modern board games would be very, very different. Effectively, if you want to use a very easy comparison, imagine Willy Wonka of board games, and you've got Marvin Glass... Now, Marvin Glass is, is an interesting character in that he was a genius and a little bit demented and obsessed with privacy, and he was quite stringent and strict with his employees, I seem to remember. Yes, they're... Um, Which we'll get into, I presume, as we go. Well, we can, we can do it as we go. Yeah, the boardroom and the ideas room yeah. in his office was it had no windows. It was in the centre of the office, and there was insane levels of security. I seem to remember. Yeah, I seem to remember you had to have a special pass card to get into... The, the, the certain part of the building where ideas were created. I can tell you. You know what? Let's start at the beginning then. I'll let you, let you go because well, I've given the meter. Oh, no, no, here it says mousetrap, yeah, collectible cheese. What does that mean though? In what, in what respect is it <laughs> I don't know. I made that up so we could just move on. There's no collectible there cheese. There bloody is. I reckon he meant true. There pursuit. is. No, because he didn't, Marvin Glass Associates didn't invent that. What mousetrap? Trivial Pursuit. No, I know they didn't. Well, well, why would they have called in Sid Saxon? Why, why would they have have <coughs> collectible cheese in a game where there's no cheese in it? I thought you have mice. About? You have a mouse. What do mice eat? Yeah, but there's no cheese. There's cheese in Trivial Pursuit, and there's no mice in it. No, so there's no there cheese in Trivial You've Pursuit. We just defeated it's a wedge. Your own argument. It's wedge. I haven't defeated my argument. My argument is 
what's the point of having a cheese unless it's that one plastic bit you put on the very last square, which is where the trap is. The winner has all the cheese. There's what cheese? <laughs> he says Sid Saxon. Sid, Sid Saxon said. Sid Saxon said. Well, yeah, he did. Yeah? Well, who's... What, I'm looking at art. I don't, I don't care now. Get look, into it. It said, it, look, it said it was invented by Burt Mayo and Gordon Barlow and Harvey Kramer. Mousetrap? Yeah. And then uh, they brought in a board game troubleshooter called Sid Saxon, who redesigned it, introducing collectible plastic cheese. Maybe. Yeah. I don't remember and it. And then they took it to Milton Bradley, who turned it down, described it as plastic junk. Then they sold the idea to Ideal. Yeah. Ah, oh, look, Sanya's fat. She's our fat checker. Fat checker. Here as comes the fat mouse, checker. <laughs> as your mouse moves around the game board, you will collect cheese pieces from the cheese pile and from your opponent. I don't remember the cheese at all in Mousetrap. You see his face. No, no, by all means, gloat. I just don't remember it. In fact, recently, I got, like, you know, uh, there was, like, Game Boy versions of board games. Oh, here games. comes saying to prove you further wrong. Oh, no, yeah. That's so strange. That Was that added recently? Well, no, it was in the 1970s by Sid Saxon. I just don't remember <laughs> there being cheese pieces in it. I thought you went around the board, and as you went around the board, you built the trap, and then at the end, you're in a loop, aren't you? And then eventually someone has to land on the trap and someone has to land on the activate the trap button. Mm. And whoever does wins. But I don't remember being collectible cheese moments. You know, um, Rube Goldberg, you know him? Yeah, the inventor of all those. He was well pissed off. With like, Mousetrap? Yeah. Yeah. I can he, imagine. He asked for royalties but was turned down. But be, and because he was old, he couldn't be bothered to um, fight them in court. But yeah, weird because I know there was another, there was a British illustrator did very similar work to well, Goldberg, he's, he's, wasn't he? He's it? local to us. Is he? Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Oh, God. What's the museum? They've got the museum in... Um, yeah, I know. I know, but I can't remember this stuff. My mind's gone blank. Can you edit in right now what, what it what is? What his name was. Alfresco Pratt. Oh, of course. Yeah. Now I remember. His name was... Alfresco Pratt. Heath Robinson. Heath Robinson. Heath Robinson. Thank you. I'm surprised he didn't sue then. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe he was dead. Maybe. He Maybe he might have been dead. He might have been a dead man. <laughs> a dead <laughs> man can't sue. <laughs> right, you want me to tell you? Let's start the Marvin story of Glass. Marvin Glass. Marvin Glass made friends in his childhood by building toys for them. Right. For the neighbourhood kids, including a tank big enough to sit in. <laughs> And a wooden tor- uh, submarine that fired torpedoes. That's interesting, because at that time, and I'm not sure what the timeline is on this, but you know the end of comic books, there's always a page with all the toys on. We've yeah. talked about it before with the yeah, plan yeah, for that, the X-ray glasses. Oh, that was just a crappy cardboard one, though. Yes, but then you could still buy, uh, build a tank at home, yeah. build a submarine at home. And what you did was you got a massive piece of cardboard that you cut out and made it into a submarine. Yeah. yeah, or a tank. So he was doing that as a kid, or just doing as that? As a kid. Wow. That's how he made friends. But he founded Marvin Glass Associates in 1941 to design and manufacture toys. His first products were all inspired by sound, including a frying pan that sizzled and a ticking time bomb, which then exploded. That's great. Yeah. Because the story in the book that I read, which I'll, I'll send to you because I've forgotten what the book's called, <laughs> but I'll, you can read it. You can read this book, which I recommend. Pratt Life by Alfresco Pratt. It starts off the chapter by saying that when they went to toy fairs, mm. nearly every time he was there at his table, it would be the most popular and most visited table because every oh. time he turned up, he had this suitcase with a hand- pair of handcuffs attached to it and he would turn up and then open it all up and show off everything. And like he was the guy who gave us chattering teeth. Yeah. And fake dog Which I never even stuff. thought before that that was like invented by someone. It's so, it's so kind of ubiquitous yeah. as a thing. It never crossed my mind that, oh, there was an inventor of chattering teeth. Yeah. Because the other thing you've got to remember is around about this time, board games and toys were moving away from metal and wood and going into plastics. Yes. And so now more could be achieved with a lot cheaper uh, resources. Yes. So that's why you could make a butch mousetrap board game when you could, because beforehand you could, literally couldn't invent that with wood and metal. Yeah. So, well, yeah. his big, his, what happened basically in the 40s, the company got in a massive debt, and that was when he made his name as the toy man, mm. was when he started sending his ideas to other companies. Yeah. Because he couldn't afford to put them out himself, and it got him out of debt. His, the first big hit 
he had was the busy biddy chicken. What does that do? Does it <laughs> does it repeat what you say and crap into a toilet? It was a pocket sized hen that lay white marble eggs. And apparently so, it sounded like 14 million were sold. So kind of. There's always been this yeah. obsession with making birds shit for our enjoyment. Yeah. The teeth. Yeah. They were 49. Um, 1949? Yeah. Wow. Okay. These were invented by the guy because basically he hired mm. the best of the best. Not all the ideas that his company came up with were from Marvin Glass himself. No. But the teeth were invented by the same guy who invented Kaplunk. Really? Yeah. Was Kaplunk a Marvin Glass production then? Yeah. Wow. It all kind of swell, falls back to like his company. Yeah. Because, yeah, he invented some stuff himself and he was instrumental in giving us the things we all recognise. Yeah. But also, people would come to him with ideas and by and large, he would say, they're shit, get out of my office. And then maybe every once in a while, still the idea. <laughs> Just every once in a while. It's not uncommon for him to turn oh, down ideas and then do them himself. There was a lot of that yeah. going on a bit later. Actually, there's an interesting story behind these. <laughs> so the guy who invented them, the Kaplunk guy, um, Eddie Goldfarb, he was inspired after seeing an ad for a false teeth holder called a tooth garage. Right. right. So you, you know, you yeah, put yeah, them yeah. In there, so you knew where they were overnight. He imagined a pair of false teeth the size of a car chattering down the road. Because that's not a <laughs> sign of mental illness, right. is it? When Goldfarb showed the teeth to glass, he took them to a company. This was the company that sold the teeth, called H. Fishlove and Company, which were best known for pioneering fake vomit. Yeah, that's the other one, fake yeah. vomit. Again, because of the plastics we're allowed. Fish you love. Could... It might be worth doing an episode on it fish might... love. Because <laughs> they did a lot of novelty the stuff. The internet search. Fish love. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -oh. oh, God. It's the name of my oh, podcast, God. funny enough. Fish love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But do you, know what, do you know what always springs to mind when I think of these? Yeah. Goonies. So, you know, like... Um, yeah, oh, with um, Data. Data. Yeah. And he ha fires them, and for some reason, that's got enough grip to hang onto a stalactite. It works, because you're caught in the fantasy. Yes, at the time. absolutely, yes. I wouldn't knock And Data, in many respects, is riddled with Marvin glass tag <laughs> toys, isn't he? He's got the boxing glove on a spring. He's yeah, got all that kind of stuff. Glass He's, but He wasn't so much of a gadget man as a prank boy. <laughs> he was just covered in pranks that could yeah. get you out of sticky situations. The, yeah, the boxing glove. Yeah. What else did he use? Is that it? Yeah, he had a boxing um, glove and chatty teeth. Yeah, nipple clamps. <laughs> he did. And maybe, I can't remember what he did. Doesn't matter. Right. So, uh, other things he did. You wanna, oh, no, the big the big hit for them was in the 60s. It was a thing called Mr. Machine. Yes. You heard of that? You, which was sold to Was that the maths toy? No. Okay, go on then. What's Mr. It, Machine? Mr. Machine was basically a clockwork man in a top hat who would walk and open his mouth while ringing like an alarm clock. Here he comes, here he comes, greatest toy you've ever seen, and his name is Mr. Machine. He is real, he is real, and for you he is ideal, and his name is Mr. Machine. Ah. To be fair, there might be pictures of it in here that well, just, imagine so yeah, I imagine there could be. The... Uh, and also, was wasn't his company involved with? Like famously, rock and sock and robots, and those they did, kind of They toys. did rock and sock and robots, which were known as raving bonkers in the UK. They're slugging it out in the middle of the ring. And he has a hard drive to the job. And Blue Bomb is Black is knocked off. And Black is knocked off. Operation was another big one of theirs. Wow. Light Bright. Wow. Pie Face, which recently made a comeback. That's one where the literally game. We played it on Blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! 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 Yes! <laughs> yes! Yeah. It all feels like most toys roll back to the, the, some degree. Yeah. So, I mean, not all of them were a hit. Oh, there we go. That that looks like that's, Mr. That's, Machine. That's him, Mr. Machine. Yeah. Which we'll show a picture of at some point. Put oh, there some, you go. There Put he some is. fake adverts in as well. Not fake adverts. Put some adverts in as well. Anyway. They're fun. I like them. I like. It out. That's the best bits of your videos when you put old adverts in. I like those bits the best. You're a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know. This is what surprised me. If, if we're jumping forward a bit. S Simon. Simon was his, yeah. Well, not his, well, but the companies. Yeah. I mean, they didn't... They they were basically killed by video games, like many things were. Like many things were. I think were. it was 88 that they... Um, yeah, folded Fine. in 1988. I mean, they tried to... Uh, 
they tried to keep up with the times in various ways, hence, hence Simon, the electronic yeah. stuff. But, I mean, they did, in fact, they, funny enough, they made the, um, you know, the video game Tapper. Oh! Uh, oh. Where they have to pull the beer. It was put out by Bally Midway, famously, but they... They, they came up with the idea, presented yeah. it, and they said, right, we'll make this, we'll publish it for yeah. you. it was Bally Midway contacted Marvin Glass and was like, you got any ideas for video games, lads? And he went, let's get pissed. And then that became the game. Like, yeah. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, so there's other, I mean, oh, Evil Knievel, that was another one. Because that was a huge toy in the 70s yeah. as well, because he was a huge personality. Evil Knievel, if you don't know, was a stuntman, basically, and he jumped over things and crashed a lot. Yeah, and he ended up riddled with metal in his body yeah. and various repairs. Because that's what happens if you, when you try and jump and fail 20 yeah. buses or something. Um, Rick- ricochet racers. I don't know that. Uh, this dude. Was that from... Apparently it was Marvin Glass sold it to Kenner. The company. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't invented by the idea wasn't on the glass, but his company bought were, it and sold it, it on. Um, the guy who invented that, he replied to me on Facebook. Oh, what did he say? He said, Yes, I am that man. And then I said, Will you do an interview then? And, and he went, then No, I said nothing. Then I wouldn't have bothered getting in touch at all. Yeah, why did he tell me? Yes, yeah. that's, that is who I am. Did he want you to beg? I don't know what Please he tell me more about you, bro. Please tell mm. me. Um, beg. He had uh, Odd Og, which was a uh, thing with a mechanical frog where kids had to roll balls into its mouth. Oh, right. You know that? So, I mean, I presume because of the, the, his influence on the toy industry, things like Hungry Hungry Hippos were possible. Yes. And Frustration. I think Frustration was... Wasn't Might that have been him? Because the Popomatic was something that someone invented but didn't have a board game oh, to boom. go along with it. So it was just like, how can we make this work? And so I went, ah, stick it on, basically, at frustration. Well, they were the, sorry. responsible for my favourite board game, which is Haunted House. Is that Ghost Castle? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the two names. Who's brave enough to play Ghost Castle? The victim's journey, room by room. They take their chances. Along the way, anything can happen. And usually does. To win, you must reach the coffin and lay the ghost. No. Will anybody survive Ghost Castle from NB Games? Yeah, because it was also called Witch, Witch, Witch yes, or something yes, as well. Yes, I tell a lie. And eventually it became Real Ghostbusters. The Real Ghostbusters had a what? version of it. Yeah, it's exactly the same, except... except the move of the Ghostbusters around and all the uh, different corners of the board are now themed around a haunted ah. house of the fire station. But they didn't change it that much. You still have to go up a rickety staircase and yeah. drop a skeleton well, I, down I, a... Yeah, I never used to play it as a game. I no. used to put my Star Wars people in them, put them down the chimney. Yeah, I used to turn it into a kind of haunted house Goonies where it's like, we're walking around a house full yeah. of booby traps. Yeah. Oh no, the painting. Ah, oh, he's falling over. <laughs> it's the fireplace. Oh no. I loved all that. Yeah, I, I loved the, the 3D games that could be play sets because board games were by and large reasonably um i'm not gonna say boring but they were flat you got a dice and some movable parts glass his influence made board games more like toys yes they play things as outside of the rules in fact i guarantee most people who bought those kind of board games didn't really look at the rules yeah they just set it all up and play with it a lot well yeah mousetrap i mean when you could be bothered to set it up was you know fantastically Tactile. Tactile. That's the word, isn't it? Tactile. Tactile. Because I also have a love of Tommy and the way they make their toys. Yeah. This whole world of uh, tactile play. Tactile. Yeah. Uh, it really fires off all my old man nostalgia buttons. There we go. Yeah, Haunted House and Ghost Castle. Yeah, they are. The Haunted House of Horror. Did, your, did the school glow up? I believe it did. Did it? Did I, I remember know. the school glowing up. Glowing up? What do you mean glowing up? It glue up. It would glue up. It would glue up in the dark. It would glow up. You mean glow up? It would glow up. It glue up. It would glow in the dark. It glued. It doesn't glow up. It, it glows. Glued. Wait, why has he got a talking view master here as what? well? What? 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 Hang on, I'm going to have to go. We got some more have of look. his stuff then. <laughs> <laughs> a close up of the a close up of a talking view master reel designed by Gunnar Lickitis. Oh. Lickitis had a few patterns on the talking view master, including one specifically for these special reels that had attached records that spun wow. while the music player stayed stationary. The record was translucent to let in the light. Don't mind this bit, everyone. It's just here to disguise an edit point in the episode. We'll try not to make it too random or weird, because we know how some of you hate all that shit. Perhaps you could imagine the next part of the episode is loading. You know, like a video game. You like video games, don't you?
It's going on rather a long time, isn't it? This must be driving you mad. I'll be honest, they're sticking with this for longer than seems sensible. What a shame, as the episode was going so well up until now. Don't worry. If you don't find this sort of strange meta humor funny, it just means you're too stupid to get it. Perhaps you could use this time to consider supporting the channel on Patreon? Though frankly, why would anyone after this? Well, that's probably enough. Enjoy the final seven minutes or so. Alfresco Pratt. What were his big flops, do you know? Well, I've got some of them. Yeah. Well, they weren't necessarily flops, but they certainly didn't go... To, to they weren't evil Knievel. Yeah. Yeah. There was uh, Silly Sammy. What did Silly Sammy do? Silly Sammy was a ride on duck that had a big, long telescoping neck that you could manipulate. And it had a so pump like... that you press and you'd go quack. <laughs> oh, so it wasn't like that guy who rode a fake emu on TV. No, sadly. So you didn't put, put your legs in it. Oh, uh, see, so that's what I'd want. Yeah. Um, um, the Tiny Tim Game of Beautiful Things. <laughs> as in the Tiny Tim who sang Tiptoe for yeah. the Tulips. He had a board game made by Marvin Glass where you had a shopping bag and you had to collect beautiful things you know as what, you what? went around the board. That doesn't sound too bad on the <laughs> you know, I'm actually quite curious about that one. Uh, it's got some really nice artwork on it. It's so 70s. Oh, I'd love all that. That Kid, which was a doll that was meant to be like your kid brother, but it was, it was one of the first talking e electronic uh, dolls. And you'd pick him up and he'd go, oh, put him down, you're ugly. Oh, um, yeah, I can see why that didn't catch yeah, on. And he would say, if you took his catapult away, he'd go, you better put that back or the monster will get you. So what, it's a passive aggressive <laughs> toy? Yeah. Oh, I don't like him. Um, I, I, I'm glad he flopped. Yeah. His attitude stinks for a toy. Now, this one I do want to try and get. Uh, Fang Bang. <laughs> Sounds like a vampire porn film. Yeah, Fang Bang. What do I have uh, in Fang Bang? Basically, you add... It sounds absolutely lethal. Players would wear these monster masks. Yeah. And, you know, the big long balloons. Yeah. You'd pump them up and you'd put a plastic um, snake's head on the end of the balloon which had metal fangs, and the idea was to try to burst the other player's balloons by flicking the... Holy shit. <laughs> I Cut to some kid with a fang in his yeah. eye. Ah! It sounds ah! absolutely lethal, but it's awesome. Because I remember, do you remember that toy, uh, I Vomp to Bite Your Finger? Yes, it would leave the... You get a little, yeah. little vampire bite your finger. I was always, well, I didn't know how he left the blood marks. Uh, and then my mate went, folk tip. <laughs> folk tip and I was like oh you're killed it. I thought he was a real monster but god look at all these toys all these James Bond toys and yeah he did everything didn't he he really he did he enjoyed reading the book they're not they don't know what well we can recommend it if you want to know more uh, we'll, we'll put links to a world without reality inside the mind of Marvin Glass toy yeah. vault so, because so... it's thick and it will tickle all your nostalgia buttons quite vigorously. A bit like us. I mean, I've literally got this on my lap to prevent the audience, the, the God-fearing audience, seeing my chubby nub. <laughs> oh, you're semi. <laughs> Nothing semi about it. It's definitely detached. No, wait, that makes no more sense. More like a bungalow. Yeah, it's, it's more like a box in an alley. <laughs> covered, in, <laughs> covered in piss. <laughs> With a piss thing. Look at this, carpet. it's a Jaws toy. Yeah. I it's had that. basically Bookaroo. I didn't know he did that either. Yeah, I had that. I mean, I presume he that, must have had a hand in Bookaroo. That, I, um, I, I got that for Christmas. And a month or so before Christmas, I walked into my mum, mum and dad's bedroom and my mum had that out. And I was like, well, what's that? And she said, oh, it's just that I've got for myself. Did you believe it? No. No. Did you get it for Christmas? <laughs> yeah. Did you feel a bit ripped off? Why? Because you saw it in advance and got spoiled. No. What? No, I loved knowing what I was getting. I don't anymore. I like the secrets yeah. now. But as a kid, I was terrible. I used to go hunting for my presents. I had um, Underworld on the ZX Spectrum. I basically played that to death. <laughs> and then put it back. Way, way before Christmas. I used to just go get it out, load it up, and then sneak it back into my mum's wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never do that. My mum was so like strict when it came to toys that when it came to Christmas, they would all be wrapped. 
months in advance in some instances yeah. and then put into the attic with a padlock on. There's no nah. way you were getting it. Oh, I knew where they kept them all. Yeah, I, yeah. I, the worst one though was um, I had the Doctor Who TARDIS, the Dennis Fisher Doctor Who TARDIS. Yeah. I got up at like half five in the morning and went and got it out and play with it. And I was my mum and woke up. She was like, "What are you doing?" And I was at the foot of her bed playing with it. <laughs> I was like, uh, and I said, "Here was my here was my defense." Go on. I said I didn't know it was for me. No, <laughs> so that's even better. <laughs> What you should have said is, Mother, I'm from the future. I wanted to say thank you for the TARDIS. And then go into it and go, whoop, whoop, whoop. Didn't do that oh, for a bit. No, it was for me. I just yeah, got it out. I just assumed it was someone else's. I had that TARDIS when I was a kid as well. Yeah, it's great. You spin it around. And the inflatable th- uh, light bulb on the top. No. I had a big plastic tent with a TARDIS. No. What did you have? What were you talking about? It was the action thing. You put Doctor Who in it and spin the, the lamp on top. It's this big. I don't and remember and then that. he'd disappear. I've got the figure. I've got the do- that Tom Baker toy? figure. Yeah, from the 70s. Oh, I thought... I had the great big plastic tent. You know, a very oh, simple tent. plastic frame tent that you yeah, pull yeah. a vinyl thing over. I didn't have that. I had that and then my brother burnt it down. Were you in it? No. <laughs> that would be bad, wouldn't it? Because you'd be all melted TARDIS. I'd be, you'd be sitting right now on a couch with a man who's half TARDIS, half boy. You'd look like something out of Doctor Who. I would. I would be called... <laughs> the Blurpees. But burn, 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 Eric. Burn. <laughs> <laughs> Not fire retardus. Very, there very we go. Good. See what I did there. Well, there we are. Philip Glass. And not no. Philip Glass. Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton. No, not Bill Paxton. The toy inventor. No, when Marvin he... Glass. Yeah. The guy who invented modern toy industry. Very well worth your time. This is a great book. The other book that I'll mention to you, and you can put a link down below, you can get as well. I think this is fascinating. Dianetics. <laughs> What, are you a Scientologist now? <laughs> no, just saying you are. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Send us some money on Patreon. <laughs> and and uh, uh, live long and prosper. Yeah, and check out my podcast. Bye. Bye. Alfresco Pratt.